Welcome back everyone to continue the spirit of the last episode working with user experience researchers. In this video, we're gonna go to dissect interviews that are given by a UX researcher. For those who don't already know, if you apply for an UX internship or UX full-time job, likely you will have a round of interview with the user experience researcher. It's not 100% that you're gonna get around with the UX researchers, but it's still possible. So I think it's always a great idea to prepare for that, to cover that front when you go into an on-site interview. Today, I prepared 18 questions to share with you. Some of those questions are actually I got asked by a UX researcher. Some of them are the ones that I asked the UX researchers when I interviewed them. The rest are the ones that I think are worth covering or knowing since you know I've been working in Silicon Valley for quite a few years. So now let's grab your favorite drink and let's get into it. Yo. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Let's just get right to the question. I'll walk through them one by one and I will give you tips and hints how you can approach them along the way. So, very first question that is very likely you're gonna get is that what is your past experience working with a user researcher? It's a really classic one. It's probably one of the first two questions that you will get. I definitely have got asked um, this before, especially at Fitbit for my first full-time UX job. And you just walk through how you work with them, like what's the interaction is like, what the frequency is like. It's not too complicated. All right, second question. What type of data do you collect? Specifically, this is about what type of data that you will collect when you do user research or when you work with a user researcher. It's gonna be uh, everything that you have worked on, uh, qualitative, so all quotes, or paragraphs, anything that's not numbers. Or on the other side, right? Is it all about quantitative data, analytics, metrics, specific number, improved by 12%, uh, decreased by 10%, the speed is up by 20%, so less is 20 seconds faster to check out. What type of data do you collect? And of course, ideally, you should have both, so. Next question, number three. Can you walk me through an example of using user research data to inform design decisions? This is also a classic one that you can get asked, um, or if you don't, great to know, because user researchers work with UX designers to provide them insights, finding recommendations. So what do you take from them? Just give them an example. Uh, maybe they did a early round of discovery research and found out people are really opposed seeing red color in um, food delivery app, then don't use red. Or there's some accessibility issues. People with uh, visual impairment couldn't really use the app at this particular screen. So that informs your design decision. You will design it accordingly to help address those issues, those findings, those insights that the UXRs have discovered. Should be pretty straightforward as well. Number four, what is the most interesting research you have got involved in? This is quite personal. What, um, depending on the type of research that you worked on, the topic, people you got involved with, maybe you have some really surprising finding. Something that uh, you can think about and reflect on. Number five, what's the most challenging research that you've worked on? So number four and number five, they could be the same question, depends on how you take a look at it. Maybe the most challenging research that you have worked on is the most interesting one. Maybe the most interesting one is the most challenging one you have worked on. So think about those two questions together, um, you might have some findings. So for the challenging ones specifically, it might be the timeline is really short, so it's challenging, time constraint. What are, what are the constraints that you can get from user research? Maybe you have five different users for, for testing. They all say different things about uh, the design, the concept. Uh, in terms of feedback. So which one would you take? How do you interpret the, the data, uh, the findings, uh, their words, their quotes? So that could be something. Okay, number six, what kind of research did you work on before? So this is similar to the first question. What is your experience, uh, past experience with the researcher? So what kind of research have you done before? You should know you have two types. I'm not gonna spoil it too much. I've made a video about it. Uh, link in the corner and description down below. I've talked about two types of research and they're actually just two types of research. It could branch out even further, but high level, those are the two types. You can further break down into subcategories. But number seven, how do you form a hypothesis of a design concept and validate it? This is not just design related, but also pretty UXR, UX research uh, heavy. Because every time you design, you come with some assumptions, hypotheses. User research should help address those to uh, help you uncover the findings, to 
validates to see if your hypothesis, your assumptions are correct. So just walk them through uh, a project. I thought about, I thought this is what users meta model will be, for example, and then when we go to user testing, they think in a completely different way. That's how you validate it. And number eight, how did you collaborate with UXRs at different stages in a product development cycle? So this one is a little bit different because this is more process driven. Uh, first, you have to understand what a product development cycle is, what are the phases that it has to go through, and where would the UXR go in, or when will you work with UXR uh, in this cycle. So, something to look up, something to learn. Uh, I'm not gonna go over too much detail into it, maybe I'll have to have a separate video on it. Number nine, when do you need user research in your design process? So, this is different from the product development cycle. This is purely about the design process. Well, of course, research is first ideation, brainstorming, uh, wireframing, prototyping, testing. Which stage will you loop them in to say, hey, I have a question. Hey, I need some help in research. It's not meant to be a trick question. You should know this. So you can think about some benefits of looping them in at different stages. So if there's a benefit, you can always do that. Number 10, can you tell me a challenging project that you worked on in the past and how do you work with UXR to resolve it? So maybe you went to a challenge. This is extremely hard to design, extremely hard to conduct user research, or, or maybe just extremely hard to design because there's so much unknown. And your resolution is supposed to be working with UXR to help you get more clarity. So think along that line. Number 11, actually too much talking. Let's get a coffee break. Be right back. How was the ad? If it's bad, too bad. I couldn't get to pick what ads to show you. Well, let's get back to the question, shall we? Question 11. Imagine you are the UXR and I am the designer. We are trying to design the next generation, next iteration of Apple Pay. Walk me through how we can work together. I've got asked this before, but I put a spin to this question. I think it's a good question because it forces you to switch the role. So it becomes you are the researcher, I'm the designer. So if you can work with me, you can answer all the questions, you can ask the right questions uh, and walk me through the process, how we can collaborate. That kind of saying that if I would hire you, I know how to work with you. Number 12, what is your ideal collaboration between UXR and design? This is more about in the ideal state, everything goes right, goes right. What do you expect from UXR? So designers should know. So my take, my quick two cents take on this is, that's something that I talked about in my interviews. I will get involved in the research, I work with the research doc, draft research questions, build prototype, work with researchers but not do the research myself. I had that realization because I have done like six research on my own because we are short staffed in user researchers. So if you were there, you will feel me, you will know what the ideal collaboration is like, when to look them in, what I can ask, what I want to ask, what kind of finding, uh, presentation, what kind of uh, uh, insights back that I should be expecting from them. Should be straightforward. Number 13, have you done user research yourself? So you should have at least done one or two, maybe in school, maybe when you're switching career in bootcamp or your individual project, you should have done some research. So just walk through what did you do? Did you do a survey? Did you do interview? Did you do a one-way mirror usability testing session with a camera on the top? Like how I mentioned in the other video, is it a longitudinal study? Is it a uh, really informal chat interview, but you have talked to 100 people? What is that? Just talk about it. Number 14, how many people are on your team? And likely it's gonna follow up with how often do you interact with researchers? The first question is more like a setup that leads to the follow up. Because if you talk about your team and you never mention you work with user researchers, then they might not ask this question. They might ask you, uh, what research you have done by yourself before. It's basically trying to ask you in a less biased format. Uh, so this should be pretty straightforward. Like how often, this is like frequency, is it like every day, every other day? Or you can uh, answer from the perspective of a product's uh, cycle, depends on the project, if it's a long or short one, we, whether we need finding or not. Yeah, easy. 15, when was the last time that you worked with a UX researcher? So this basically just walk me through the last project that you did. So the good thing is, because it's the last project, your memory tends to be fresh, so you can elaborate more details on. And if the last project that you work with a researcher is not really robust or uh, solid or not a lot of interaction, maybe pick another one uh, that has more of a story to tell. Question number 16, 
how did user research help your design process? Uh, they will have follow up, tend to have a follow up, asking more details, probing you. Do you have an example? So this is similar to some of the other questions, uh, but this comes in a two part because uh, the first one might be a little bit more high level. Uh, it has valid assumption to help uh, look into hypothesis, to help catch early mistakes, early usability issues. How I will approach it is, when I got asked the first question, I will ask high level, give a high level answer, like valid, valid assumptions, and then I will dive straight to giving an example of how I work with researchers in the past. Um, that helps me design because if I know they're gonna ask that, save them time, save me time. At the same time, it, at the same time, I'm taking it more proactively. Like I want to provide an example to this question, a more concrete example to this abstract question, rather than you asking me. So it's number seventeen. Have you ever done any research that you don't think? It's worth doing. This is a really interesting one because it, it asks you two things. One is really make you think whether the research you have done itself, like the question you're asking, are valid. Maybe they don't even need research. Or maybe you don't think research will help this situation. Uh, maybe design should just make a call. One example is, should you do research by removing floppy disk for a Macintosh? Yes, no? So something to think about. And then follow up is like, why and why did it happen anyways? So this just asks you walk through what happened in the past, like why you don't think it's worth doing the research. It's not making stuff up, you just have your own rationale. Your rationale could be right, could be wrong, but you should have a take on, I think this should not have happened or this should have happened in a different way. And it had happened because we did not do enough thinking in it. We did not draft the questions correctly. We did not really sing with other stakeholders, products, uh, eng, marketing, to uh, get green light on this one. There are many reasons that it still happened, but it shouldn't. This is more a question about learning from your failure. It's not really poking into things that you have done wrong. Because anything wrong that you did is a chance to learn, to iterate yourself, right? So this is the question for that. Number 18. If you only have one day with researchers to seek some quick validation, feedback, usability testing of the design concept, what will you do? Basically giving you time constraint and how you approach user research with researchers. How do you collaborate with them given this constraint? So my tips, my hint is think about MEP research. MEP means minimal viable product. So the really, really basic, bearable, fundamental version of something. So since you have only one day, that means you can only do so much. But you still have to do it. It's not like you have only one day, you don't do the research. You still do it. So what is the minimum viable version of the research? Maybe instead of asking 100 questions, you ask the 10 most crucial ones. Or maybe from 10 to 5, 5 to 2. Maybe instead of 10 participants, 3 participants, 5 participants. So think about it along the line so you can answer that more cohesively. Those are all my 18 UXR questions. And of course, there's always a way to expand the list. And in fact, I have expanded more than 18 questions in my worksheet. So if you want a copy of that, you know the drill, leave a comment down below, send me an email, and very soon you're gonna get a copy attached to your email with this beautifully laid out, really useful, really helpful user research questions. Realistically, there's no way you're gonna get all 18 questions in a 45 minute session with a user researcher. There will be probably three to five factoring how long it would take you to elaborate on each one. But still, I recommend knowing how to answer all of them to stay well prepared. To me, I think the best way to prepare for this is to actually work with a user researcher. So that leads to my next list of recommendations. If you're already working with a user researcher at work, wonderful. All those 18 questions should be pretty straightforward to you. If you're at school, get yourself to do some individual research to understand how user experience research works. Or you can join a research group in your university and work with researchers there. If you're switching careers or freelancing, you can still do some research on your own. You can conduct interviews, send out surveys, ask your parents, your family, your friends, and do some usability testing. One generic approach for everybody is to reach out to researchers in the industry, hear from them, get them a coffee or get them lunch or dinner, they will be more than happy to answer your questions. So what should I ask them? You can literally flip the questions in the worksheet that I just showed you 
and ask them the same thing. So for example, instead of asking, how did you work with user researchers? If you flip them, it will be, hey, I'm curious. So how do you actually interact with uh, UX designers when you're at work? How often do you work with them? What is that interaction is like? And then, bam, you get your answer right there. Another way to get a general understanding and get some ground cover is to watch my previous video about how UX designers collaborate with UX researchers. Those 18 questions and these prep tips should be enough for you to work on to prepare for your next internship or full-time job interviews. Other than UX researchers, another counter partner you will work closely with is a product manager. So what are they? What do they do? What questions they might ask you in an on-site interview? I have actually used my best design thinking and craftsmanship skills to capture those in these videos for you. Check them out right there. Like and subscribe to support the channel. Keep designing a better future. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.